Black Power was good, family. Tomorrow, City Hall, 830. The Cannabis Rules Committee will be meeting to vote on some of the suggestions that were put forth by the Department of Cannabis regulations a couple weeks ago. Again, um, folks who are monitoring how this whole situation is, is growing is really saying uh, more of us need to get involved because once again, powers that be, folks that got the money are doing their best to influence regulations that will be to their best interest. Um, as some of you know, there is an FBI investigation into a lot of different individuals down at City Hall, mostly the folks of color, because um, we know white people doing the same thing down there. But there's one sister who is saying some of the same kickbacks that appear to have been made in the area of development is also now happening in cannabis. Um, one sister said three of her dispensaries have been put into the possession of one of her former Armenian partners. So that and the fact that the social equity program, which was supposed to be a part of LA's new cannabis regulations, has been stalled. A year later, we now have 178 legal businesses and only six of those businesses are black. So your presence is needed at City Hall tomorrow at 8.30. Those of y'all who saw the um, video where I'm using the nebulizer and responded, yeah, I am good. I am um, near fully recovered. But the purpose of that video I put up last Friday was not so much about my personal health, but that same day, um, an uh, hour or two later, I put up another video where we were speaking on the third world existence that is happening in Los Angeles and other major cities. Um, you know, especially amongst black folks, but you know, even amongst brown and other folks, there is a third world existence for a lot of us. So, um, that video was not so much, you know, my personal condition, um, the video I had put up was actually shot about a week prior um, and that I went into the hospital after um, developing bronchitis. Um, you know, I developed asthma in my early 20s based off of uh, some ill prescribed medicine. But because of asthma, when I catch colds and when this other weather switches up like it has been the past few weeks, you know, super cold, raining, I'm prone to um, pneumonia and this time it just so happened to be bronchitis, but I am better. Um, speaking of the video that I did Friday, speaking on this third world existence, again, the urgent need for that is because this being the first week of the month, you know, a lot of people tend to get those benefits, blow them, and throughout the remainder of the month tend to lean on people who manage you know their money and resources a little bit better but even with that it has always been about the third week of every month the black community is doing bad we hurt you know a lot of the money's gone blown and um, too many people are leaning and depending on a very small few but now especially since the so-called government shut down a few months ago and they began to um, disperse a lot of these fixed incomes on the first of the month is now around the second week of the month when the hurting is beginning so that was really the purpose of that video last week really encouraging folks to be a lot more responsible with whatever resources come into your possession whatever finances and if possible invest those finances and and try to allow your money to make money but especially um you know look out for your people that is our number one resource and investment so you know again um we were at the fourth and some folks is already um you know went through what they had but those of you who still got something those of you who um anticipate getting these tax refunds more so than ever y'all being wise, being financially responsible is needed. Um, Cause just to make it to the end of this month, 
it's, it's getting wilder and wilder, y'all. So really, you know, do the right thing with that. But also, folks been questioning um, my position with this whole ADOS. And again, I'm going to add a lot of links and, and um, information for y'all to do some homework. Because we've shown numerous times here on social media where those of us who are out here in the streets do a lot of the more radical grassroots um, frontline organizing powers that be throughout our struggles always find the softer, more controlled alternative to put before the people. And that is what I'm seeing happening once again. It's not that I'm anti-reparations again. Anyone who's taken the time to read our black political agenda for the past three years See in our fourth fourth point the need to build our black economy Reparations is spoken of in both the third and the fourth point in the third point It says we must declare ourselves Free of and cease paying all so-called outside debts until the overwhelming and out, outstanding debt of reparations which is due to us is paid in full the fourth point reparations must include land natural resources restitution punitive damages and 300 plus years of lost wages and again it's not that we should not um, distinguish ourselves as descendants of people who were enslaved because again our ancestors by all means were not slaves they were forced into slave conditions but um we most definitely are well overdue um that debt of reparations but realistically it's been shown time again numerous people have spoken on it so ultimately how that is gained is through concessions you get concessions through political consequences how do white people prevent and co-op political consequences by putting more control, softer alternatives in front of you, which will not force them to give any real concessions. What I'm seeing with this movement right here is that they are trying to lead you back into the voting booths in 2020. Um, one of them appear to be, appears to be somewhat in favor of Trump, um, the woman, uh, as we have identified, is is anti-Pan-Africanist, anti-Black nationalist. In one of her videos, she even appears to be somewhat um, supporting one of Trump's positions. The brother, um, from what we've gathered so far, appears to have formerly worked for a district attorney. And of course, as a lot of us know, district attorneys is part of the state. It's part of the state that enslaves us. So again all of a sudden out of nowhere we have these two individuals who are claiming something that's now even being challenged by another brother who said he actually started the whole ados movement but again y'all the focus is about reparations so why now is it that some of you can't even talk about it without mentioning this other stuff shows how white folks control too often um what some of you believed to be the avenue to our success but in actuality it's a uh, it's a circle right back to the plantation so you know as the days go i'll try to go into that more but i am including some information showing y'all how time and again they have co-opted our movements whether it was garvey they initially used w.e.b dubois to go against them and w.e.b dubois later on found out garvey was right then with the black Muslim movements and Malcolm being um, the head voice in that, um, Dr. King and the Christian movement became the softer, more controlled alternative. But Dr. King too later on found out black nationalism is the way. And that's all we're saying today. These two individuals heading this ADOS movements are very much assimilated into this white institution. All right, bro. But um, ultimately, what is their game plan? How do they anticipate forcing concessions? From what I'm seeing is they appear to be appealing to candidates who will be running in 2020 for president to try to put it on their platform. Will that deliver reparations? No. Again, what has to be done is us building our own independent party, y'all. And that party becoming strong enough to carry out the necessary political 
consequences that will force a concession. One of the things that our brother um, Master Musa Il offered um, as a term for people to study is known as the fifth column. The fifth column is a group that um, that co-ops the stronger movement. So again, we showed you a few years ago where a lot of us was in the streets doing a lot of radical organizing against the genocide by pigs. Then all of a sudden, they gave voice to um, some newcomers and, and the newcomers took people in different directions and people, brothers, temporarily joined that and saw, oh no, they trying to silence the black male voice. Um, somewhat feminist movement, somewhat gay movement, it had everything else to do other than fighting to preserve black life. And we were telling people the fight is out here having a presence daily to prevent it, not so much chasing ambulances, reacting to it, but again, that's what the um, co-op movements do. They lead you in a direction where you don't necessarily have as much impact on stopping or even changing what's happening. So, again, I'm going to um, add some homework for those of you who are interested, a few videos for y'all to check out, but also um, understand what is meant by a fifth column movement. And um, lastly, with the grand closing down here at the Crenshaw Plaza, we hope to be meeting with um, what we believe to be at least one of the property management, property owners down there, because we were told today there's three different, if not four different property owners of the Crenshaw Plaza in total. Um, so we are hoping to meet with one of the property management companies in the near future. We were told this particular company is even looking to institute a um, hiring program for blacks in specific stating that they were not aware of um, the conditions down there so we will most definitely keep y'all posted on that but again on both the city and state level this situation of blacks being locked out of the workforce is being recognized and we're being told there are certain policies ordinances in motion to help fight back against that and just lastly one more time I want to salute our brothers out there in Compton the Black Panthers for National Defense, um, our brother Mudiwa Mugabe, part of the ATC, also um, brother Kesh, you know, they led that charge against um, the Korean who assaulted our sister, and most definitely our mighty warrior King Solomon, who has actually been incarcerated ever since for, um, you know, retaliating on behalf of our Queen's honor. But in addition to um, shutting the Korean down, now one of our sisters has actually taken control of that beauty supply and she now owns and operates. So that is most definitely a complete victory. And our ultimate goal in these um, shutdowns, also mentioned in the fourth point of our um, black political agenda, in which we have spoken on reparations strongly for the past three years. And just one more point with that. People in L.A. and even across the country, you know, when it comes to reparations, our mighty ancestor John Peoples was one of the strongest voices advocates for reparations. And in his lifetime, one of the attempts to co-opt and, and put misleaders in front of him was with a group known, um, and I'll just say it, Cobra, um, headed by David Horn. David Horn, once again, being an intellectual who they felt might have had a better presentation might have felt spoke better but again coming out of white institutions they um attempted to put him in front of mr peoples all the work mr peoples did to um raise awareness in the streets amongst the people about it but then given um you know in Kroger, uh this individual david horn a platform more so than mr peoples and a lot of times the events they put they wouldn't even invite mr peoples to the table to speak on it and again, that's what happens. Um, individuals who simply will sit down, speak, capitalize off it, and at the end of the day, whether we get reparations or not, they not tripping because they get wealthy off of you. You know what I'm saying? For you for making them more relevant. Again, some of y'all coming out of doing the real work, make these other individuals more relevant to where they get their reparations, being able to raise money off of you now, giving them the voice. Um, so. You know, just study some of the information I'm going to share with you. And like I said, in the near future, we most definitely going to go into um, 
how movements are co op how misleaders are put before you, but also the, the necessary movements and consequences that will be needed and building of our own political party to um, both force concessions of reparations, but even more importantly, build our people up to where we are self-sustaining. Black power, be at that meeting tomorrow, 8.30, Cannabis Rules Committee, City Hall, 8.30, Black power.